on screen. I'm going to show this to all your friends when you're 18. You can't wear your I know, I'm going to test that wishy live again. Oh, look at the washman on there. This is a new T-shirt from Jake. I like them, man. I think they're bad girl. We're not talking to you, Charlie. We know what you're doing. You're sleeping. I'm talking to... Mademoiselle Charlie, in the... Mademoiselle. <laughs> Crushing grapes, I'm making tonight's vino. <laughs> Wicked. Right, this is Bibby's new fucking dream. Me and Rafs, yeah, we're buying Mo Garen Arfs. Fucking like mad. Uh, that's, that's actual size. That's actual size? Yeah. 14 inch, it's got video in and out. Yeah. And here we have Tribes. Tribes of Tribes bus. This is... Second or third going over, looking good, looking techno, looking posh. As you see, Debbie's in the trees, painting the bus and the trees. The totally techno go faster stripe. Come on live on that one. Airplay the bus is looking lush. So this is the side we like and this is the chocolate side we don't. Yeah, totally. Yeah. There you have it. Totally painted. Looking pucker. Oh, right, so they actually must have gone straight over to Sarajevo. They probably didn't even go down that coast, Mickey and Ixie. As it goes, they probably just gone straight to Sarajevo. We keep going. <laughs> Next up, <laughs> next up.
same language as Mark, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. yeah. Here you have Luca kicking my birthday dinner and everyone else. We come from the fucking 23 Galaxy in Bosnia now and it's fucking wicked. Is that dinner, is it lovely? Are you cooking tonight, Raf? You're not going to feed many people with that one, are you, my love? <laughs> This is the Croatian border. Everyone lurking around their vehicles. Here we are, getting fucked up from Bosnia, big style. Being totally evicted from one place to the next, from the centre of Sarajevo to Split, which is the border, which is a ferry crossing to go back to Italy. Wicked, we love it. How do you think the mission's been going so far in Bosnia? Well, we've been here for about six weeks now, is it? Yeah, yeah about well, I think. Um, and we've had much better luck in Banja Luka than we had in Sarajevo. Um, after getting escorted out of 
Muslim held Bosnia by the police. Um, we arrived at Banjaluka and have had a blinding reception ever since. And here we are now at Castle, the, no, the Castle in Banjaluka, where we've been booked to do a festival for one week. And how, how are you finding that then, Dixie? Well, well, it's all right, but obviously our ultimate aim here would be one day to reconnect the Croats, Serbians and Muslims with the techno vibe, but uh, I think we've been quite ambitious there, don't you, Debbie? I'd I say a touch. I mean, yeah. maybe that's a couple of years' <laughs> work ahead I mean, of I, I think um, we've met up with uh, the Ema Posse. Like, yeah. Ema Posse and Banya Luka are a bit of a mixed breed, aren't they? We've got two Serbs and one Muslim. Right. And, um, I think we've sown the seeds anyway. Yeah. Sown the seeds. I, I think so, yeah. Come on! Where's the beat? Come on! So you're definitely up for coming back and uh, doing some more uh, rave parties, yeah? I think moving forward would be the one. I mean, we, we've been here tw twice now, haven't we? Twice? Yeah, I mean, yeah. we have, as I said, so much. We, 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 like we, we, we put in now. the time, right. I reckon, and it's time to, to go forward. Yeah, but apart from that, um, wicked. Rave on. Yeah, yeah, we like it. Rave on. Like it. Rave on. Here we have the lads playing volleyball in the car park in Istanbul. Wicked, let's go. <laughs> Lovely bit of volley. What's the score? 15 7. 15, is that it? 15. Beautiful game. It is Saturday night and we are at a car park. <laughs> Hence, no rave. <laughs> And um, what's on the menu for tonight then, Paula? Well, it's nice menu, Debbie. There's um, ratatouille with um, bulgur. Oh, how lovely. And uh, when are we going to start doing that then? Well, I hope you put that video camera down and uh, we'll get on it, yeah? So we're finally leaving Istanbul, getting ready to uh, go to Iran. It took us one month to get all our visas or our documents. It's not bad going. Seeing as everyone reckoned we wouldn't.
come the others. Rax. Oh, wicked, there's a bus. So we're just missing the transit. It's the 18th of October and everyone's starting to uh, tidy up. <laughs> you tidying up, Max? <laughs> so here we have Raf. Raf, how's it looking on the bus? Uh, very dirty. Very I think, dirty. Uh, I think we've got a little chance if they don't look at that. What are you up to? Tidying up the truck. Ready for the Iran border, I'll take it. Yeah. Optimistic. This is the boys' bus. <laughs> nice, Luca. <laughs> and here we have Captain, the driver. <laughs> and he's going to bed. <laughs> Us three girls are going into a ride and we've got to um, change our appearance slightly. So this is what we usually look like and then uh, we'll see what we usually look like after our dress is on, yeah? But <laughs> right, we've changed from our western look to our radio look and how do we look? Do we look good or what? Yeah, give us a twirl. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, big shout, sound conspiracy in the area. <laughs> we are actually going through bandit territory. That's what it says in the balloon planet book. Don't stop at night time. Get out of the way, geezer. Oh, God. It says, stop at night time. Don't drive. Desert areas, always stop at service stations. <laughs> so, Mark, 200 cases to the Iranian border. Got any worries about anything? Uh, apart from getting in to Iran. There's quite a long list of things that you can't go through Iran with, isn't there? Yeah, everything. Everything from photos to records, tapes, to literature on the wall. So here we are queuing, waiting. Jim? It's too risky. It's too much risk. risk. We spent so many years getting all this together. What's the point of risking it risk. on one mission? We can go back and regroup and get stronger and go on another mission without having to risk it. We've got I thought you were just putting it in. Mm -hmm. I was looking at the other side like, oh. yeah, we're, we're going to get to go with no money, three vehicles, we've lost fuck knows how many this and that and the other, four dogs, three vehicles, all our money, but we fucking did what we said we was going to do. Like. Yeah, we didn't <laughs> go back to Italy boring? with our heads at the ground, fucking and everyone laughing at us. <laughs> they failed. So the outcome of today, we found out how much money we need to go across to Tehran and uh, I think it's about four grand. We got a have three of our vehicles and take only three. So now we've got to unload loads of people's tats, their home, speakers, clothes, records, everything, and stash them into three vehicles. So we're taking the Leyland, taking the bus, we're taking Max's. We're leaving the transit, Debbie and Schnock, and Julius on top, non stop. Group decision is to carry on going to the What are you saying, in Sound Conspiracy? Finding it in the desert then, with your desert-like glasses on. Empty. <laughs> Flat. Flat. Flat.
here we are going to another garage. Hopefully we'll get a bit of a better price this time. What's the price of Ooh. diesel normally? 60 shitters. That was his sad. It's a station so he's stopped. What is it then? Is that you that smells? Show me fucking... As usual, this is just the third petrol station. We've been turned away oh, again. Oh. Not quite sure what the queue is for diesel in the run. And not the quite... So far, the Iranian hospitality it hasn't been all that, like it says in the Lonely Planet book. If we leave Iran, we can't get back in again. If we get into Pakistan and we get to the Indian border, we can't get back into Pakistan either without a visa. You've so, only got one entry visa yeah. to Pakistan, so then you're in no man's land. Yeah. We lose everything. I'm stood there on the side of the road with no money, no clothes, no life set, no studio, no mates. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mind? I can have this in the next year. The thing is, when we left this mission, we were all over the place. We came yeah. together on the mission. We did all come together as a positive yeah, on the mission. Really think, um, so your plans are driving back to Europe. Any any plans of which country you're going to go to? Is that the latest update? Is it? Yeah, no, no plans. No. You've got no plans. No. No. I can just go. <laughs> Fuck it. I don't care. <laughs> Steaming after the two kids that just jumped the border <laughs> in the river. Get over that, are they? No way. Get over that wall, innit? There's the two kids. There's the two kids running desperately. I hope they make it. I don't think they're good. I think they're well, I think they run towards the wall and get over the wall. I don't know what's in there. It's probably a fucking army base. Oh. So it's the uh, 5th of the 11th. And uh, from the Pakistani border, we've been escorted by an armed guard because we haven't got a car now. And uh, they escort us to uh, the police compound, which looks like it's for uh, dumped motors. And then there you have uh, our bus in the corner. And uh, from this point on, we're going to have another five more armed guards on guard in each vehicle to escort us all the way out of Pakistan which maybe is going to cost us a hundred dollars per vehicle which I think we're getting a bit ripped off here but there's not much we can do about it really either stay here or pay the money so I think we've got to pay somehow do the washing up for a year or something here we yes, are in Pakistan, checking out it's the local wares. Got yeah. Ryan, Julian, and Raf all trying to pick there. their new suits. Yeah. So we have Schnock in his new togs. <laughs> he is looking, you wouldn't believe he was French. <laughs> Anything to say, Schnock? Which we know not really. Un peu en français. Qu'est-ce que tu penses ici? Je pense que tout va bien. On fume. Il n'y a rien à faire au soleil. Ça le fait.
basically going through this is a Pakistan Indian border coming up prop probably in about five minutes or so there's Hecate our uh, tour guide gonna be going around to the customs yard pretty shortly so let's uh, see what's in store for us uh, for our last and final uh, border I'm sure we'll cruise it so we're at our final border which looks like it's going to be the the hardest border, and uh, we've managed to travel through the uh, Iran border and the Pakistan without a carne. Can you tell me what a carne actually is, Max? <laughs> uh, it's a piece of paper, basically, that guarantees that you don't sell your vehicle in the country you travel through. So you, you get stamped as you go in and then you stamp as you go out. Two options. One is back sheath. And the second is to leave our vehicles in the pan, catch a train to go out, while the three owners of the vehicles sort out the car name. Okay, this is a crucial moment. We are just through Pakistan. And we're just at the Indian border now. Fingers crossed. The worst possible scenario has actually happened on the Indian border. We are not allowed to take our vehicles because we haven't got a car now. Eh? So we are having to unload all our live set, our clothes, our baggages. Basically everything apart from the speakers. Quite honestly, I didn't reckon it was going to happen, but it has. Don't quite know how we're going to get our stuff to go. Well, don't really know what to say, really. Pissed off, I think is the word I'm looking for right at this present moment in time. So, we've arrived in Delhi and uh, we've applied for our carne. Yes. Offense, offense. <laughs> Well, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're all sat in the hotel room in the Parwal Gans and we sort of half of us are about to go to Goa and connect it up down there, find a nice house, beachfront house and sort out some club dates and the rest of us are going to sort of uh, live it up in the Parwal Gans really for the next five days while the car needs to sort themselves out. Right. <laughs> so from, from six vehicles and 13 people we're down to five backpackers getting down to Goa first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with, yeah, with a few same. stickers. With a few yeah. stickers, yeah. There's no idea where a portfolio. <laughs> we haven't got a portfolio. It is true, it is true. No, the portfolio is No, we have got it. It's in the bottom of Debbie's bag. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Oh, bloody good thing. <laughs> 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 He's Ruth booking the tickets to uh, get the map there, go. Yeah. So hopefully we'll be there in uh, 14 hours. in the morning, 16th and 11th, 1998, and uh, the first posse, backpacking posse, have arrived in Goa. What are you saying, people? Okay. Here it goes. Sell that for us. They've 
actually arrived. I don't even know what date is. <laughs> but they're here. We've turned up. Leyland and bus. I don't exactly know where Max's is parked. I know it's here somewhere. Wicked. So the whole posse has actually made it together like we like we like we intended. Like we knew we'd make it together. Wicked. This is our house that we're gonna live in. Four arms. Sans conspiracy vient d'arriver. Facom, total resistance et occupé. Spot tribe. Yeah, and Spot tribe in the area. Of course. Il est où le hip hop? Où? C'est ça la question? Ouais. Eh ben, you wait a few minutes and it's gonna be on. Come on then. Give us a bit of a hip hop line in between, yeah? Yeah, man. Raving somewhere in Goa, somewhere over there. Successful nights raving, they're back home. You have a good they... time. Oh, it changed my life forever. <laughs> it's just beautiful, man. It was beautiful the place, the palm trees, the, the children, the, the music, the vibes, the colours, the signs, everything. Beautiful. beautiful. I'm coming back. I'm, I'm shy, really. Oh, yeah, nice time over there. Yeah. I love. 
Like, to give me give a tie. If you ever need a tie or coffee or cake or something at a rave, they're fucking wicked, man. Anytime you want a tie, go to the time and I guarantee she'll give you a tie. Airplay. For me, Goa is whatever you want it to be. You can do the, you can do everything or you can do nothing. It's just, uh, it's a slight pity that people aren't more open-minded here than I, they, than I thought they would be. The chance scene, well, I've discovered that outside Europe, uh, um, there is only the chance scene, as far as I can see, and it is, it's massive. It's like very, very big. It's like everywhere in the, outside Europe, basically. And as far as, as far as how we've got along and worked in coherency with the, with the chance scene, is quite a touchy subject. We've done a few parties on our own and one with with the chance posse which which as far as I see was quite a success apart from the fact that we got ripped off we had to pay for the whole party pay for some pay for the Indian posse sound system as well as paying for the party and everything me and Claire think that the whole scene in Goa is tourist based it's, it's a tourist operation there's no roots there's no grassroots there's no, nothing in, there's nothing settled in here that wants to change anything. You've got a load of rich tourists coming here, dictate the rules, live here for three months, spend all their money, have a really nice time and then leave, basically. And they want to preserve this little hedonistic space for their little hedonistic scene. And they don't give a fuck about anything, anything else outside that, basically. It's just a little ideological bubble for loads of rich people to come in for three months of the year, do loads of parties and leave, basically. And there's nothing underneath that. At the end of the day, they don't really care about the music or the parties. They just want to make a bar, make some money, get the taxis, make some money, and it's all to money. And, go, and because of the trance scene, it goes like a fair play. They're all, they're all, there's those fat cats making loads of money out of it. And so when you come along, we've had an obstacle with someone else who's got a sound system here, and he controls all the rails. So when we try to do a party with someone, we can't because he, he, he tells the police to stop him. Unless we pay. Unless we pay, unless we pay loads of money, which we haven't got. Overall, I think Go is a good place. There's a lot of potential here. I just think it's, it's set in its ways. You know, after the last 10 years, I think it's set in its ways, you know. And a lot of people don't think we've made much of an impact here, but for me, you know, from a scene that's been going 15 years, in the three and a half to four months we've been here, I think the, it, the impact that we've made has been quite substantial for me and, uh, and, our, and our posse. Like, um, well, we'll be coming back here next year. Let's wait and see. You know, we haven't actually got enough money to get to Nepal yet, which, as you probably know, we have to get there to extend our visas to get out of India, to get back into India, to go to Manali. So let's wait and see what happens.